Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephen Tipps, and I currently serve as the chair of Southwestern's Board of Trustees. In that capacity, it is my distinct pleasure to announce that the board has appointed as Southwestern's 16th and first woman president, Dr. Laura Scandera Trombley. And courtesy of modern Zoom technology, Laura is a part of our video conference this afternoon. Having held two highly successful college presidencies, as well as the presidency of a major American research library, Laura is an accomplished administrator and scholar. She will be an excellent Southwestern president. Laura currently serves as the president of the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut, the most diverse private university in New England and one of the most diverse colleges in the country, having qualified this year as an Hispanic serving institution. During her time at Bridgeport, she has eliminated a three-year budget deficit reducing the budget by $10 million in her first year without affecting faculty numbers or student aid. She has reduced the tuition discount rate by 4% and increased first to second year retention by 6%. On the fundraising front, she has increased annual giving by 160% and major gifts by 373%. From 2015 to 2017, Laura served as the first woman chief executive officer of the Huntington Library in Pasadena, California, where as a 19th century American literature scholar, she has conducted much of her research about Mark Twain, her primary scholarly interest. She told us during her campus interview that at least with regard to the last 10 years of Twain's life, she knows more about him than anyone else in the world. While leading the library, she balanced the budget and ended her first year with a $3.6 million surplus. The library also set records for attendance and membership during her tenure. In May 2018, the Huntington Board named her the recipient of the library's Dixon Wechter Distinguished Professor of American Literature Award. Laura is best known for her successful 13-year presidency of Pitzer College, one of the five highly regarded Claremont Colleges in Southern California. During her tenure there, from 2002 to 2015, she balanced annual budgets, successfully completed three fundraising campaigns totaling $123 million, increased Pitzer's endowment by 211%, and helped the college weather the 2008 Great Recession by suspending all endowment spending while retaining all staff and faculty and avoiding any decrease in student aid. Under her leadership from 2010 to 2015, Pitzer led the nation's colleges in total Fulbright fellowships, which led President Obama to appoint her to the J. William Fulbright Foreign Scholarship Board, which she chaired in 2015-2016. As a result of her efforts, Pitzer rose 38 places, from number 70 to number 32 in the U.S. News and World Report rankings during her time there. Laura is the daughter of teachers. Her father taught fourth and fifth grades, and her mother was an elementary school principal. At age 16, Laura enrolled at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California, as its youngest freshman, ultimately earning bachelor's and master's degrees there, summa cum laude. She earned her PhD in English at the University of Southern California. Her son, Nelson, will graduate this spring from Union College in Schenectady, New York, as a member of what surely will become the highly memorable class of 2020. In her letter of interest in joining our community, Laura concluded with this, quote, I am deeply interested in the presidency of Southwestern University as a long-term commitment as fundraiser, administrator, and faculty member. I am looking for an opportunity to provide value and to give back all that has been given to me over the years by mentors and students as well as to take advantage of the depth of my year's experience. Laura, welcome to Southwestern. I close with the words of deep gratitude to our interim president, Dale Noble. When Ed Berger decided late last summer to leave Southwestern to become president of the St. David's Foundation, we were most fortunate that Dale, my fellow board member, was willing to step in as our interim president. Having previously served as Southwestern's provost, and for 15 years as the president of Denison University in Granville, Ohio, Dale essentially came out of central casting. He has served us and will continue to serve us until Laura steps in on July 1 wisely and ably as our leader. 
having experienced a presidential tenure far different from anything that he surely could have imagined. Dale, thank you from the entire Southwestern community. To find Laura, the Board of Trustees commissioned a national search and appointed a committee consisting of trustees, faculty, alumni, parents, staff, and a student to advise in connection with the search. I asked my fellow trustee and Southwestern alumna, Amanda McMillan, to chair the search advisory committee, working with Vice Chair Miguel Zaria, the president-elect of the Southwestern Alumni Association. Before hearing from Laura, I would like to ask Amanda to provide you with a brief overview of how the search was conducted and how it resulted in our finding such an outstanding new president. Amanda? Thank you, Stephen. And welcome everyone to this historic day for Southwestern University. I know I speak for everyone on the Presidential Search Advisory Committee when I say it's been a true honor to help Southwestern find its 16th president. Uh, as Stephen mentioned, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the process we undertook to find Dr. Trombley. And then I'll introduce Laura to um, provide some opening remarks. And after that, we will open it up for Q&A so she can answer all of your questions today. As you probably know, we started this process last fall when we retained our search consultants and formed our 15 member search committee, which as Stephen mentioned, had representation from students, faculty, staff, trustees, alumni, and parents. After seeking input from the SU community, we uh, then developed our and published our presidential search profile. And after that, we ended up with a really talented and diverse pool of almost 130 candidates. Uh, including city pre sitting presidents and some candidates for whom this was the only position they were applying for. And I think that really says a lot about the strength of Southwestern as an institution and how we're viewed out in the community from a higher ed perspective. As you probably saw from the presidential search profile, we were looking for several desired attributes, which included finding someone who was a demonstrated and passionate advocate for higher education and independent liberal arts colleges, someone with a visionary, unifying, academically focused and action oriented leadership, someone who could be a true champion for student success and nurture a culture of inclusive excellence, and also somebody who is a great fundraiser and has a keen financial eye. After our candidate pool was assembled, the search committee held several meetings to carefully review candidate materials, check references, and we went through several rounds of narrowing the field followed by a round of in-person interviews with semi-finalist candidates, of which there were nine. The committee then selected three finalist candidates who were invited to participate in campus visits and meetings with interview advisory groups, as well as the senior staff and trustees. The interview advisory groups were comprised of 20 faculty members, 12 students, and 12 staff members. And I'd like to take a moment here to extend a special thanks to all of these interview advisory groups, as, as well as the senior staff and trustees who spent so much time engaging in this important work in the week before spring break. Under normal circumstances, the week before spring break is already very stressful. We, there are midterms and it's already a very busy week <laughs> and was even more so as the potential impact of the coronavirus pandemic was becoming more apparent. So thank you all so much for all of your input during that process and for making time to do so. After those campus visits, the search committee carefully reviewed and discussed all of that helpful feedback and perspective. And after those discussions, the search committee unanimously and enthusiastically recommended to the board that the board appoint Dr. Trombley as the 16th president of Southwestern University and the board did just that, and they did so unanimously. I am so excited for the leadership Laura will bring to Southwestern, both as a seasoned veteran and someone with visionary forward-looking leadership who can lead in good times as well as challenging ones. And with that, I am honored to introduce the 16th president of Southwestern University, Dr. Laura Scandera Trombley. Laura? Thank you so much, Amanda, and thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate your kind words. And I also want to join with you in thanking the search committee for all of their wonderful work. And I just loved coming on campus and meeting some of the faculty, staff, administrators, and students while I was there, particularly the students. We had a wonderful, wonderful dinner together. As Stephen said, yes, I am the daughter of educators and I was born into a liberal arts family. Both of my parents were first generation 
they went and earned their master's degrees in education and they were educators for most of their lives. Uh, when I was growing up, I was determined that I would not become a teacher because I saw just how much it took out of them because they cared so much. And I thought, I just don't know whether I have that kind of energy level. However, as it turns out, uh, as my mother said, she was just a busy, busy child. Uh, I think I have that energy level and I absolutely love teaching. I love scholarship. I love working with faculty and the atmosphere and the purpose and the tradition of the liberal arts is something that I hold very close to my heart. I am a product of the liberal arts and the reason why I'm here today is because of all of the faculty and the mentors and the individuals who supported me along the way. And I'm grateful for all of their assistance. I have been now a Twain Scholar for, I think about 30 years. And I feel in many ways as though I'm just finally starting to understand my subject. <laughs> I've spent an enormous amount of time uh, researching him, learning about him and talking about him. And when we talk about lifelong learning, uh, I think the work that I do with Twain uh, will take me until the end of my life. I will be endlessly curious about what he did, what he wrote, and most importantly, why he remains such a cultural icon. I enjoy teaching and try and teach at least one class every year because I always want to keep the students in front of me. And I always want to be reminded what we do is so important and why all of our efforts need to be directed to creating the best learning environment for students, both inside the classroom as well as outside. I believe in the holistic development of students. And what is also an, and equally important to me is doing everything I can to support the faculty so that they have all of the tools that they need, that they have all of the resources that they require, and that they too have the best kind of learning environment. I was attracted to Southwestern University because having had experience at many different kinds of institutions over the years, I kept being drawn to what I knew best and frankly where I had grown up and that was liberal arts institutions. When I learned about the programs that you have there, your values, your commitment to community, these are things that all resonate very, very deeply with me. The Mosaic program is absolutely groundbreaking. I have enormous admiration for the students who participate in that program. The faculty, I've spent a great deal of time um, looking at what the faculty do there and their areas of research and scholarship, and it's very exciting. And I think that the students have just extraordinary opportunities. And the campus itself is beautiful. And I think it actually creates an environment for students where they can really grow and develop, find their voices, find their power and learn what it means to not just become a, a real intellectual individual, but also a community member. And it was community that finally really impressed me. Everything at Southwestern University is community. And I have seen that feeling on the part of the alumni that I have spoken to. In fact, some of the trustees that I spoke to today, these are multi-generational Southwestern families who have maintained and carried forward that sense of community. I also, in the conversations I've had with staff, many of whom who have been there for such a long time, they care so deeply and are so loyal to this institution that that kind of commitment is rare these days. And it's one that I greatly respect. I so enjoyed meeting the faculty who were on the search committee. I loved reading their scholarship and their work. And I'm already thinking about ways that I would love to partner with them in some of my future projects. So I, I know that these are very difficult times and I have learned new skills such as Zooming over the last week or so. And I'm very fortunate um, that my 
graduating senior uh, was sent home and he has been helping me so I can actually make all of these connections with you. But frankly, um, it's been a long time since my son has lived with me. And I have really uh, enjoyed having his company after him being away from school for so, so long. Uh, I am though uh, a member now of that very special 2020 group of parents who have also been told that uh, commencement is canceled. And that's something that we are both uh, thinking a lot about these days and hoping that uh, we will have that moment where I can finally watch my son cross the stage. I was thinking I've been part of commencement ceremonies for 17 years now, and I've never had the experience of being in the audience and watching one of my own actually graduate. I've seen thousands of students graduate, just not my child yet. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping we will see that. And when we have the commencement for the 2020 students at Southwestern University, I will be there first and foremost, cheering them on and celebrating their achievements and thanking all of the faculty who have been so instrumental in their lives and in their futures. And so with that, it's so good to be here with all of you today. Great, thank you so much, Laura. We are, we are thrilled to have you here. And now for all of you on the, the conference, which there are over 450 of you, <laughs> we wanna hear your questions. So you can click the Q&A button at the bottom of your toolbar on Zoom, and we will get those questions and try to get as many answered as we can during this time. Um, we've got a few to start with. Um, the first one would be, Laura, what is your attitude toward shared governance, tenure, and academic freedom? Well, I'll just take those one by one. In terms of shared governance, I think that it's incredibly important for everyone to understand what that engagement means. And it's crucial for those conversations to happen not once a decade or even once a year, but they should be ongoing so that everyone understands what their appropriate role is and to actually not have something in play at the time. To gather together trustees as well as faculty to have those conversations because there are faculty who are coming on every year as well as trustees and this really needs to be part of their orientation. I found that sometimes people have assumptions that they make about shared governance and that I think institutions don't have proactive conversations about it as often as they should. What typically happens is that there will be some kind of an event or some kind of a decision, and then you're going to see a lot of controversy, a lot of hurt feelings, a lot of issues arise. So as a way to make sure that people understand just what that particular institution's definition is in terms of shared governance in accordance with their culture, these need to be active conversations. As far as tenure, Tenure is really a look into the future of what someone is going to be doing, and it is a lifelong relationship. It is something that has to be taken very seriously, and in my experience, faculty are very, very serious when it comes to tenure. I think it is in the best interests of everyone to make sure as much as possible that the process is transparent and that expectations are made clear in the cases that have not gone well. It always seems to come down to people thinking that they were potentially doing the right thing and then finding out that somehow they weren't or that there was a, a kind of expectation that they didn't fulfill. Again, the greater the transparency, I think the better. And also knowing that we are really working in not just the present, but the future when it comes to both faculty and our students. Then, as far as academic freedom is concerned, I think that is absolutely the cornerstone of academia today. I think it's incredibly important and it must be protected. And it's something that I feel very strongly about. Great, thank you for that. Our next question comes from a student. In what ways would you make yourself accessible to the student body so that we as students feel we have a voice at Southwestern? 
I would love to be invited to your meetings as appropriate. I would welcome you into the president's home. I plan on eating with students. I also hope to teach. Uh, I love teaching and I like to engage with students both in the classroom as well as on campus and at different events. I love sports. I played basketball in high school. And so I would be a regular presence at all of the contests. Great. And one other student related question that I think is really important, particularly today as we're all grappling with how to manage through a global pandemic. Can you speak to your views on the need for mental health support for college students and what you would like to see at Southwestern? I think that it is enormously important. And one of the things that I have learned from my students since I have been teaching and uh, two years ago, I was teaching full time at the University of Southern California because it had been a long time since I had been full time in the classroom. And I went there just so I could hear what this generation of students was thinking and feeling. And this is, I think, the most technolo technologically <laughs> competent and proficient generation in history. Yet what students were telling me is that they have enormous anxiety, that they feel tremendous pressure, that they have uh, a sense that their future is unclear and that expectations are very high. And so it is incredibly important for institutions, particularly liberal arts institutions, where you really get to know students on an individual basis to offer that kind of support for students. I need to be your best student to learn what is actually available on campus now. And I intend to have a many listening sessions with students so I can hear about the ways in which we're succeeding and the ways that we might try and think about creating some new programs so that students are best served. Great, and, and related to that process, another question. Um, hi, Dr. Trombley. Um, although I think, you, do you prefer Dr. Trombley or do you prefer Laura? Uh, whatever is most comfortable for folks, but I like Laura. Okay, great. Um, as you imagine your first six months at Southwestern, what ways do you plan on getting to know the campus, the students, and the faculty? And what are some goals you have for that first few months? Well, what I'd like to do the first few months is first get to know everyone and to do a lot of listening and to have regular sessions with students in residence halls, so to speak, to be where they live so they can tell me a little bit about what they're experiencing and the aspirations that they have for the institution. I would also like to have regular luncheons with faculty so we can engage in the same kinds of conversations. A lot of this is getting to know each other and the stakes are high because we will be coming from a very difficult time in our nation's history as a result of this pandemic. And so my prayers are that we will be together this fall and we will be able to have those kinds of in-person conversations. I also have asked and have discussed earlier that a, tra a transition committee be created where faculty, staff, students, alumni, and trustees uh, and administrators come together to talk about what would be the most important things for me to be aware of my first six months there? Because you're the experts. I'm the person who is entering into your community and you know far more about it at this point than I do. So I would really appreciate hearing from the committee, where should I be? What attends, uh, uh, events should I be attending? What do I need to be sensitive about? And what kind of outreach should I do? Uh, I really like to work collectively with people, and I think that would be really invaluable for me. Great. I also, by the way, like walking in the morning. And so <laughs> I would, one of the things that I've always done is create a walking club where uh, I usually make a nice quiche for everyone to have afterwards, and then we get up at about 7 o'clock and we get out there and walk a little bit. That sounds great. Yep. We're doing lots of neighborhood, daily neighborhood walks right now in, in this house. Um, I think a lot of people are. Well, one other question. Uh, let's see here. Where did it go? Um, let's do lots of questions coming in. 
In light of the university's necessary switch to remote learning during the pandemic, do you see Southwestern improving resources for supporting faculty development, not just in fostering familiarity with instructional technology or online learning tools, but also more broadly? Yes, absolutely. I think that that's crucial. And one of the things that uh, this crisis has taught us is the importance of these workshops and the importance of expanding our portfolio. Uh, as someone who now is teaching her very first online course, I have found this to be a real challenge. And I'm very thankful that my son has been assisting me in all of this. But I do think that this is something that we need to make available for faculty as well as for our students as part of their ongoing um, education and just giving them as many tools as we possibly can. There are many things that you can do with something that is as flexible as Zoom or some of the other technologies that we have right now that can actually enhance the student experience, whether it's a residential liberal arts student or not. So I do think that, again, as I was saying, really part of an incredibly important part of what I do in terms of my work is to make sure that faculty have the necessary resources that they need in order to teach the way that they want to and have the greatest enjoyment and success with their pedagogy. Oh, that's great. So we talked about students and faculty. Um, we probably need to talk about the staff as well, which is also an important part of the Southwestern community and listening and learning from them. Besides having a, some sort of transition committee, how will you interact with staff and keep the staff up to date on things that are important to that part of the Southwestern community? What I'd first like to learn is what is currently being done in terms of staff. One of the things that I've enjoyed doing in the past is I have what I call a breakfast club where I meet and have breakfast with every member of the staff in groups. And I come with no agenda. I come simply to learn from the staff to hear what they're concerned about, what issues they might be having, and then think about how we can best work together. Uh, I am not sure whether there is a staff council or what kind of structures are in place there yet, but I would like to make sure that I do have regular meetings with the staff so I can hear what their aspirations are for the institution. I, I'll, I'll say this about the importance of staff. My son, who has been at Union College, came home and he shared with me that when he was filing to graduate with the registrar, um, a member of the registrar's office said to him, we're really going to miss you. You've been a great, great person to get to know. And he thought that was so touching and so meaningful that he wanted me to be sure that I heard that story. And the fact is, is that our students interact with staff on a daily basis. These are the people that they know really well. They see them when they're in the mail room, they see them on campus, they see them on the grounds, in the cafeteria. They are truly part of the institutional culture and I think that they need to be honored and valued. I've also started um, staff recognition awards at places where I have been and if that isn't something that's present, that's something that I'd love to consider. Okay, great, thank you. Next question is, uh, Laura, welcome to the Southwestern family. How do you plan to engage with alumni as president? Have you thought about how you might engage those alumni who may not be strongly connected to the university to get them more involved in life of Southwestern? Yes, uh, I would love to reach out to alumni who are not engaged because I believe strongly that one of the things that is so important and that has been such a great part of the Southwestern University tradition is your sense of community. And after this pandemic subsides, community is becoming even more important to us as a culture and as a country. And so the best way to engage alumni is to talk to them about our students and also introduce them to our students because our students are so talented and so exciting and they are our future. And I want to make sure that our alumni have the opportunity to get to know these wonderful young people. Also, what I'm hearing from students is that they very much want alumni to mentor them. 
becoming a mentor is extraordinarily important and it's also a joy. So creating more of those opportunities for alumni is something that I would really be very enthusiastic about. Great. And then uh, also, in addition to the Southwestern community, how do you feel about increasing the connection between SU and the general Georgetown community? Well, I'm, I, I see myself as not just becoming a Southwestern University member, but also I'm a member of the Georgetown community. And so I would want to meet with various groups in the community. I've been a Rotarian for a long, long time. I love speaking to nonprofit organizations. I love to guest lecture in high schools and elementary schools. I want to be a presence because my goal is that every resident understands that we are everyone's university that we are a place that loves our students and we also love the area and that we have something to contribute far beyond the property lines of the institution. Great. Then we've also gotten a couple of questions about um, student athletes and also Greek life at Southwestern. As you know from our prior discussions, uh, we have almost 50% of the student body who are student athletes. Separately from that, I think we have almost a third of our student body who are part of Greek life. And so maybe for, for both of those groups of students at Southwestern, you can talk a little bit about um, your perspective on athletics programs at liberal arts institutions, and then also the role of Greek life and how they can be supported at Southwestern. Athletics is highly valued by me. I've always, and you'll see me there, and I'm usually the one that's cheering too loudly. Um, but I, I think that uh, student athletes perform both on the field as well as in the classroom. They have an incredible experience with their coaches as well as their faculty in terms of the mentoring that they receive from both. And, the, and in fact, when I was at Pitzer, I was part of the SCIAC conference. And so uh, we have had opportunities to engage in the past. And in terms of Greek life, I've been at several institutions where we have Greek life, again, I believe that it's about building community and lifelong friends and staying strong. And also the more people that you can have with you as you journey through your life, who understand you and who support you, I think the better off and the wealthier that you are. My son was president of his fraternity at Union College. I've met his brothers and they're just wonderful, wonderful young people. So I'm very supportive of both. And I also want to make sure that we have frequent and positive communication together. Oh, that's great. And keeping in line with, with the theme of community at Southwestern, um, we've gotten several questions about um, diversity, inclusion, belonging, and equity at Southwestern, whether that's making sure that everyone in the Southwestern community feels a sense of belonging, also promoting that with respect to hiring and retention, with faculty and staff, making sure that we have an amazing student body that, that reflects the population around us and making sure that that diversity kind of goes all the way up to the Board of Trustees level as well. So would you mind sharing a few comments about, about that topic as well? Absolutely, speaking as the first woman president, I think that diversity is incredibly important and I believe that it needs to be reflected at every level. And one of the ways that is helpful is to really keep track of statistics and make those transparent and to really get a sense of just how diverse faculty, staff, students, administrators, trustees, and then have active conversations about whether this is something that we are satisfied with, whether we want to try and have more representation, what is it that the institution in terms of its culture wants to represent. And I can tell you, it is enormously important for students to have a sense of presence, of place and identity and see people that reflect who they are and who they want to be. And I also understand that as the first woman president, I'm going to be representing something that has never before been part of the Southwestern University campus. And I take that very, very seriously. So yes, 
uh, diversity is life and we need to think very strategically about it. And it isn't just an issue of hiring. It's a question of valuing and retaining and making sure that things are equitable, that all voices are heard and that individuals do not feel marginalized for any reason. Great, thank you very much for that. Um, and another community related question, what are your thoughts on Southwestern's United Methodist history and connection? And uh, how will we continue to foster that connection to the United Methodist Church? I have great respect for the Methodist connection that you enjoy. I have been, uh, I'm, I'm nine members of my family at Pepperdine University Church of Christ. I was a, fac a faculty member at a Catholic University in Germany. I think that this brings a representation and an aspect to student life, faculty, staff, that is an enormously valued additive to the entire experience. And particularly during these difficult times, uh, I find that having that presence on campus is incredibly comforting for everyone. And so I understand that there is a historical legacy there, and it's one that I respect. And I also want students to have an opportunity to explore all sides of their development while they are in college. And I believe that encouraging a sense of spirituality is among those things that we should be promoting. Great, thank you. Well, switching gears a little bit, what role has philanthropy played in your career and how do you see philanthropy continuing at Southwestern? Well, I've been a fundraiser for a long time uh, and I believe in it. And I think that there's no greater good, frankly, than um, supporting the future. And that's exactly what students represent to me is promise and the future. And in terms of my personal philanthropy, I take that very seriously and I believe in giving back. And I think philanthropy is a habit and it starts young and it should continue throughout your life. It does not matter. And this is actually something that I learned as an undergraduate when I took a philosophy course. What my professor taught me there was um, true philanthropy is when you give when you think you have nothing. It isn't the amount, it's the act. And it's understanding that it's a moment of being unselfish and it is really philanthropy in the truest sense when you can help another individual and help prepare them and support them for the rest of their lives. Great. And in terms of Southwestern's visibility, what are your thoughts about bringing more visibility to the university uh, statewide, nationally, and globally? I think you need to go out and you have to talk about the institution and what makes it great. And you need to be able to constantly explain and describe why the institution is so very special. And that's something that I really like to do because I think that the liberal arts experience is invaluable and it is going to be even more important in the months and years to come. And so I've always been part of a higher uh, education community engagement where I've presented frequently at national conferences. I've written a number of pieces for the Chronicle of Higher Education. I'm actually on a panel uh, this afternoon talking about what university presidents are facing these days uh, with the downturn in the market and the pandemic. And it is incredibly important for the president to be the face of this community and to represent what we do at such a high level. And also more people need to understand why the liberal arts matters and why it has become so increasingly important, particularly over just the last year. Well, and along those lines, what would your pitch be to parents who are seeing unemployment skyrocket and, and wonder about the value of a, of a liberal arts education? Well, what we do in the liberal arts is, first, we're educating the whole person. We are creating a sense of intellectual curiosity that was there at birth, and we want to continue to foster that. And we want to make sure that the student is developed as a whole person, that it isn't just about academic performance. It's about the human side as well. 
And what we do so expertly and so well is that we're not just educating students for graduate school or for the current job market. We're educating students for careers that don't exist yet, but they're going to need the portfolio of skills that we are going to inculcate them with by the time that they graduate. The ability for critical thinking, to do research, to work individually, to work collectively, to appreciate and understand how important diversity is, to be global citizens. All of this is going to translate into whatever career choice they make or whatever graduate program they decide to enter. That is what I've talked to parents about for a very long time now. Great. Well, we've got a few questions about Mark Twain, so we'll, we'll get to the oh, Mark Bless your hearts, bless your hearts. <laughs> uh, first of all, is that, a, is that a Mark Twain bus sitting behind you for moral support? You know, we were on the phone, or I'm sorry, we were on Zoom yesterday, and that's where I had my Clorox wipes container, and Amanda was making fun of me for this. And so I thought it would be perhaps more appropriate to put my Twain statue, but this is a very unusual statue, which gives you some sense of how highly Twain regarded himself. So at his 20, or at his 70th birthday that was held at Del Delmonico's in New York City, Every guest, 186 of them, had as their swag that particular bust of Mark Twain. So you must, I can only imagine the opinion you must have of yourself to give yourself to all of the people who come to your birthday party. So this is not an original, it's a replica, but I've always found that to just be really quite, quite a statement in and of itself. So I, I like to keep Twain's bust close by. That that is something else. Well, I'll, I'll I'll batch process a few of these Mark Twain questions for you. What excites you about Mark Twain? What is your favorite Twainism? And how do you envision continuing your impressive scholarship at Southwestern? Uh, Twain was a genius, and he was someone who had an almost unbelievable hunger to experience everything that he possibly could. This is someone who voluntarily crossed the Atlantic 29 times. He went around the world when he was 59 years old. He wrote over 30 novels, what uh, many of us regard as classic, thousands of essays. He was uh, an extraordinary stand-up comedian and he became a public intellectual in his later years. So there is so much to learn uh, about Mark Twain because he was so extraordinarily active. He passed away at age 74 at a time when um, the average age at death was 47. Uh, so he was someone who saw an unbelievable amount of change during his lifetime. He also, from a very early age, was convinced that he uh, was going to leave a legacy. So he actually started his autobiography when he was just 35 years old, and he kept writing it until he passed away. So there's a rich archive of materials for scholars to deal with. And he also uh, has an amazing ability to still be relevant today. Whenever there's a political campaign, both sides quote Mark Twain. <laughs> Whenever uh, there is um, a particular anniversary because he wrote so much, it's always possible to bring Mark Twain into the mix. You will find that I'm somewhat adept, at, no matter what the subject is, eventually it's all going to get back to Twain. Uh, so he's someone that endlessly fascinates me and I've taken a particular perspective when I do my scholarship and research about Twain. And I've always managed to maintain um, my intellectual curiosity about Twain, and uh, I've always continued to write about him. And most of the time that's done at 5.30 in the morning uh, because that's when it's quiet and when I can work without interruption. Um, my, fart, my very favorite Mark Twain quotation is, um, always do right, you'll surprise or you'll gratify some of the people and astonish the rest. Always do right. That's great. Well, we will uh, switch back to recruiting and student success for a minute. One question we have is, 
What do you think will be key to recruiting new students and retaining current students in the current climate, including the current COVID-19 pandemic we're dealing with? It's always about making sure that students know that this is the place where we care about them, where they will be safe, and where they will be engaged. That is the most important part of the student's experience. In every study that has ever been done about the value of a college degree, it always comes to the same conclusion. Students who have a college diploma over the course of their lifetimes are going to have a higher financial return. That's just one aspect though. What is really important, I believe, is the kind of development that takes place, the friends that you make, the mentoring that you have. In my case, as the youngest person at my university, um, the self-confidence that you gain by being part of an intellectual conversation with a faculty member who takes you seriously and doing work that a faculty member cares enough about to critique and to have lots and lots of conversations about with you. So it's unknown what is going to happen over the next several months. It's clear that there is an economic downturn of epic proportions. All of that to me means it's time to be in college, it's time to be learning, and it's time to be prepared. Because the one thing that I know, having gone through the tech bubble burst, the Great Recession, and now a pandemic, is that eventually these things will pass, and you have to be prepared for the next stage of your life. And the best preparation is education. Great, thank you. Well, we've got time for just a couple more questions. I guess uh, the, first, the first one, to the extent you feel like you haven't already answered it, is what are some things that really drew you to Southwestern and, and this role here? It really was the caring faculty, the interesting work that they do, and ultimately for me, it's always the student experience. And the greatest changes and the greatest growth that I have seen in terms of student development always comes at a liberal arts institution. I also love the loyalty that people have to Southwestern University and the beauty, frankly, of the campus. All of those things, the commitment, the loyalty, the expertise, and the very strong sense of community there is something that for me is very important and registers very deeply. That's great. Okay, Eli, we're gonna do two more quick questions. Um, We've got a couple of questions that in part I think are coming up because a lot of I think a lot of what people are dealing with right now with the pandemic and as you referenced earlier people trying to figure out how to feel safe and and feel safe on campus when the time comes mm -hmm. that that feeling unsafe feeling can come from different things um, it can come from what we're experiencing now and um, it can also come from things like hate crimes and so during your presidency, if there were some sort of incident like that on campus, what would you do to help make students feel safe and bring the community together? Well, and first thing, oh, I'm sorry, connected to that, um, kind of get get what get the justice they deserve by you know raising those concerns. The first thing is that I believe in preparation and having something in place so that when and if something like that happens, and you always hope that it doesn't. However, I've been part of institutions where we have had those issues arise. Make sure that you have a group in place and that that group has had training and that there is enough communication so that you don't have to make it up as you go. Because during those times, it's incredibly stressful. People are upset it's very easy to not have the right response or to understand how important a quick response is and the right kind of response. So preparation and training is there. It isn't something that you have to invent all by yourself, but you do need to make sure that culturally it's appropriate for your institution. And that's where I think that the president needs to be very firm and very clear that there is behavior that we do not tolerate as part of a safe and caring and diverse community. That is not welcome here. 
And that's where I think the community needs to come together and make that statement. Because what is so important about the work that we do together is that we in many ways are mirroring the kind of society we want to help create for the future. We are not mirroring what we deplore about our society today. And we have to set that standard for ourselves. Great, thank you. And we still have so many questions left. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to them all today. Uh, but keep in mind, Laura is just getting started. We'll, we'll have several more conversations over the coming weeks and months. We'll make sure that the team on campus has all of the questions we haven't been able to answer today and make sure that we uh, do address those over time. We'll end with a fun one though. Um, we're so excited you're coming. We hear you like barbecue and we know you like reading, especially Mark Twain. What is the first thing you will do when you get to Georgetown? Get barbecue, go to a local bookstore, hike at Blue Hole? I think it just might be hug a student <laughs> and then barbecue. <laughs> safe to do so. Hopefully it will be. I'm, I'm ready to be able to hug people again as well. <laughs> well, Laura, thank you so much for the time today. Uh, we're obviously all so thrilled that you'll be joining us as president. Cannot wait for you to get here to Texas. And with that, I believe we will turn it back over to our esteemed chair of the board, Mr. Tips. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Laura. Let's all give each other a virtual hug. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I want to close by giving you a bit of an insight into what at least part of Laura's week has been like. We finalized our arrangement with her day before yesterday. And notwithstanding the fact that she still has a day job, we have been keeping her extremely busy. Yesterday, she began preparing video messages for deposited students, other admitted students, and their parents, which Tom Delahunt and his enrollment team plan to send out early next week. Uh, this morning, she joined members of the university relations staff in making calls to major donors, a process that will continue tomorrow. This afternoon, she has an interview with the megaphone and a virtual conference call with Dale and the senior staff. And tomorrow afternoon, she has separate video conferences with faculty, staff, and the surely to be long remembered class of 2020. Uh, Laura, we greatly appreciate your willingness to give us so much of your valuable time. We are so excited that you will be joining us soon, and we're now happy to give you 30 minutes of downtime. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks to you, and thanks to everyone who joined the call. Go Pirates! <laughs>